This scene from Captain America The Winter Soldier, where a building crashes and also where they feature shots of Wilson running to avoid debris of glass, furniture and dust crumbling, the movie's VFX team had to use Blender in order to previsualize the building and to scale it. The team brought the shots into Blender and created a simulation where they could just drag the heli carrier into the building at different angles in real time. They did this to see how the pieces would crumble and how the entire wall would give away. Also Next Gen is reasonably one of the most popular movies using Blender out there and has some of the best animations you can find from a movie using the software, which clearly demonstrates that it is capable and has a lot of potential, even in real large scale productions. We have time and time again seen the mind-blowing first projects that can be made using Blender. This software has already proved its effectiveness, however, there is the idea that Blender is a software for amateurs. Although it does all what it does, it will remain just that in the eyes of some people. Something you will use to learn your way around 3D and then dump it for something better if you join the industry. Whether it be VFX, game development or animation. In today's video, we're gonna take a deeper dive into why and how this idea came about and the reasons that give Blender the impression that it is a software just for hobbyists and amateurs. To understand why Blender was seen, especially before version 2.8, as a software for beginners, non-professionals, amateurs, whatever you want to call it, you will need to understand that Blender is not fully industry standard, like Max or Maya, despite the fact that it is making its way through to achieving that goal. So we can say at least it is not perceived as industry standard, despite its sheer power as a 3D software. When a software is not industry standard, it can be stuck with a certain reputation as an alternative, especially among professionals working in the industry. Also, one of the facts that no one can deny about Blender is the fact that it has the biggest user base of non-professional users in the market right now. First of all, because it is free, which makes it accessible to anyone trying to get their feet wet when it comes to learning 3D. Instead of buying a 1700 subscription for Max or Maya from Autodesk, you can just get your hands on Blender right away in just a couple of minutes, which is very convenient. Even though this is a good thing, it played a huge role in echoing the reputation of Blender being just for amateurs. When it comes to other 3D software, they are used to teach in schools, for example Max for ArcVis, game development and VFX, while Maya is popular especially in animation. After that, these students continue using Max and Maya for the most part just because this is what the industry requires to be a desirable artist. As you can see, it is like a vicious cycle. Schools teach what the industry needs, and those students go back to the industry to use the software that they learned in school. But if the industry starts adopting Blender just like Barnstorm VFX Studio did, they will be more than capable of doing their job perfectly fine. To get a better idea, take a look at this video we just created that shows how the studio actually uses Blender as their main 3D software, working on the best movies and TV shows. Blender as a 3D software, although known for its great 3D capabilities, it is not just bound to making 3D projects. Using Blender you can do a number of other great things such as video editing, scripting, drawing and 2D animation, just to name a few. This is considered a paradise for freelancers, hobbyists and small studios. You don't have to install several software on your computer to work on a project from beginning to end. You just need one. A lot of people see this as a good thing, but people that don't like Blender use this point especially to highlight that it does everything, but it is not good at anything. And they say that it is a jack of all trades, master of none. And this is not true by the way, because for example, it is probably the best for modeling, sculpting and texturing among other 3D packages. But despite having a great arsenal of tools and features in every field you can imagine, it is not that most people use all of those features just because they exist. For example, a lot of people use DaVinci Resolve for editing and After Effects and Nuke for compositing despite the fact that Blender is capable of doing all that. The same can be said for professional productions in game development and VFX for example. Everything has its little own, very powerful and tailor-made software that can do just one thing. For example, artists use Maya for modeling and animation, 
ZBrush for sculpting, Substance Painter for texturing, Nuke for compositing, and so on. But what makes Blender very powerful in modeling and animation is the fact that it has very powerful tools such as UV Pack Master, the sponsor of today's video. UV Pack Master offers you the complete set of tools to make your life easier when dealing with UVs in Blender and Max. If you ever find it tedious to unwrap and pack your UVs and you wish there was an easier way to do that, then look no further than this tool. UV Pack Master 3 offers a powerful engine that is capable of utilizing both your CPU and GPU, making it significantly faster compared to the other solutions. The interesting thing is, it is jam-packed with a lot of features, like advanced UV aligning tools, stacking tools, advanced shooting grouping, textile density tools, and even the option to pack non-square textures, just to name a few things. If you are a 3D artist, a game developer, interior designer, character or asset artist, this tool will save you a lot of time. And if you improve, there are thousands of people using it already, so I'm pretty sure that it is worthwhile. And the good thing is, new features are being added constantly. For example, just recently, there was a feature added where you can automatically orient UVs in such a way that the texture direction in the 3D space becomes consistent with a click of a button, which is really great. So, if you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. One other layer to why Blender is seen by professionals and studios working in the industry as a software for small-time projects and hobbyists is the fact that it does not come with professional support, because it is maintained by a small non-profit organization that relies on revenue from donations for software upkeep. From what we have heard from Tom Rosendale, the founder of Blender and chairman of the Blender Foundation, he is not fully interested in working with Hollywood, aka big studios. But if Blender gets professional support, it's gonna be a different ballgame in terms of how Blender will be used by big studios, and the industry in general, I might add. Usually VFX studios, for example, need professional support to solve urgent problems in their production pipelines and to help them integrate new custom-made tools with the 3D package to make their job easier and faster. Basically, support will answer any question and help the team solve any problem. This sort of stability provided by the profits of a paid software can easily attract companies to favor a software that is paid over a software that does not have professional support. An argument can be made in favor of pushing companies and corporations not to purchase software and instead donate that money to Blender and Unprofit and both get a better product out of Blender while supporting a very noble cause of providing free software for those who can't afford it. In addition, the industry standard software that are already established and polished are custom made to fit into production pipelines from the get-go and most importantly pre-integrated into the pipeline. So, even though Blender has many pros and no cost at all, the jump needed for big studios to change the software they work with can be a difficult thing to do to put it lightly. A noteworthy point in this regard is that it may be easier for small companies to switch to Blender or those just starting out to build all of their stuff around Blender. It can be even attractive. When you think about how much cost it would save the company and the studio that is working on big and long projects. And although Blender can be crash prone, it can be used within the studio to make it more stable if it has the necessary resources, as Blender source code is available for anyone to tinker with. And if the studio ends up becoming a big part of the industry, it could contribute to making Blender a standard of its own. And that, of course, remains to be seen. And I would say it is a continuous process that may take a bit of time. Around the same topic, the 3D software that are already used in big productions such as Max, Maya and Houdini have proven their ability to handle big projects. And they have better simulation tools, especially third-party tools, and support for all and every advanced tool. On the other hand, Blender has grown a lot in the last few years, but the problem is it wasn't given a proper chance to prove how good it is in the club of the big boys. That is to say, big studios need to see it more in action and adopted by more studios, especially big ones, and used in more projects of their caliber. I mean the stuff they work on. This yet again shows how VFX houses and game development studios need reliability more than anything else, 
and Blender needs more time to reach that level, both in funding and reputation. Especially since it has been known as the amateur's hub for 20 years now at least. And this kind of reputation can take a lot of time to undo if we factor everything together. So let's paint the full picture here. Beginners want to learn 3D, but all the other software are expensive, so they head off to Blender. They use it to learn and explore and eventually get some experience. Then they want to get a job, and after they get the job, they need to learn how to use the pre-established standard 3D software, which to be honest, most job offers don't ask for Blender experience. But this is slowly but surely changing for the better. I'm personally confident that Blender will be a legit industry standard software just like the others. If you guys found this video useful, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon to help us create better and higher quality content. This takes a lot of time and effort, so your help will make this much easier. But we will not leave you empty handed, because you will get early access to the videos that are not available to the public yet, also you will have the ability to vote and choose the videos we will make next. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.